Hello crafty friends, this is the Papered Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn a few ways to draw with your Scan and Cut. I'm using the CM350 for this, but you can follow along with whichever model of Scan and Cut you have. I'm going to be using the pen tool that comes with your Scan and Cut and the Universal Pen Holder tool. This Universal Pen Holder tool does work in SDX models as well and so you'll be able to follow along. I first want to thank you for supporting my YouTube channel. I've reached 22,000 subscribers, which is amazing. So I'm very grateful to all of you for supporting this channel. And I hope to continue to grow. And with your help, I can do that. So this was, this video is based on a question as many of my videos are. It's a question from one of my new students, Lydia. She's a student on my Udemy course and she asked, I have different pens. They don't fit in the universal pen holder. This is the universal pen holder and see how it has a, a width that you can use pens for it. And she said, can, how can I make my pens fit in the universal pen holder? So Lydia, this, this video is dedicated to you and my other students who may have the same question. And also I wanted to just say like, I wanted to start at the beginning. So even though you have a question about the universal pen holder, I wanna start with this pen tool that's built in because I like to always start back at the beginning of a story. And the story is that you can all draw just with what you have already. And even if you don't have this extra accessory, which is not very expensive, I'll link to it in the description. Even if you don't have this extra accessory, I still want you to be able to draw with your scan and cut. All right, so drawing with your scan and cut is like cutting with your scan and cut. You first select a pattern and you first select something you wanna cut or draw. Cause those are your two options. Well, actually you have more options. You have emboss if you have an embossing starter kit. But basically I usually just cut and draw for, for the most part. Sometimes I emboss and I've done that on this channel. All right, so you go to your, I'm gonna to go to fonts for example. And you may be saying, but you draw with a lot more fonts than this. Yes, and in my courses, I in, in, in scanning, uh, my latest course, Canvas Workspace A to Z, we use fonts that are built into your computer. But right now, I'm showing you things on the machine, and I'm trying to talk more about the mechanics of drawing. If you want to learn about the actual software of draw and, and the software and finding SVGs to draw and finding and finding fonts from your computer to draw, you could draw anything. I'm just drawing what's ever on my machine right now because that's that's what I'm trying to do this tutorial to show you the mechanics of drawing. So let's just say. We're going to go to the numbers. This is this is letters here. We're going to go to numbers. Um, that's symbols, and there's numbers. And let's say we want to write eighty nine for like for a birthday coming up, right? So we say eighty nine, and then say I want to put like say I want to write happy with a stamp and birthday with a stamp, but I want to I want to customize the eighty nine, the eighty ninth. But I would put the eighty ninth separate than the th, and the reason why I'm going to make a th for the eighty ninth because I want to be able to resize them in relation to each other. Okay, so the th if you don't if you put them all in one line and you scale the 89, then the th will scale, but that's too big. The th should be smaller, and that's why I have them in separate little boxes. And then I can scale them, so I can go in and edit them with this little shapes, and I can scale it. So maybe the th only, th only needs to be. I don't know. I did it earlier. I did it. I think a half an inch. And, in, and I will show you examples at the end of my tutorial. So I'll show you examples of what you can make with the pen, the built-in pen tool and the adapted pen holder, universal pen holder. So let's just say one inch for that, for the 89, half inch high for the TH. See, something like that, right? Let me move it away from the line so you can see it. I already have, oops, I did have the mat. I did have the paper on the mat. It just fell, but something like that. You could do, and then you could write happy 89th birthday. Okay, let's just load the mat and draw this with the universe, with the pen, the pen tool. It's called the pen tool or the, you know, the built-in pen tool that comes with the scan and cut. The same pen tool. I use the same pen tool on any model of scan and cut. This is, this is the pen tool. Okay, now you can get many colors of ink. Let's, so I, I just have the, I have these, and but there's other color packs and you can get many other colors. Okay, I really like just using the black mostly and then I color in a lot afterwards. Okay, so let's, we're gonna make this, 
I'm going to make this hollow, meaning I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to, when I draw this, and I'm, you see how I'm loading the pen. I just took a, I took the cap off. I just load it in there, shut it. Very easy. See, you take your cap, you put it on top to, so you don't lose it. Pretty nifty. That's it. There's no, there's no determining how high this needs to go because it's already set for you. You don't need to worry about the height. Now let me just show you how to put that in there. You're just going to take out your blade holder. There's your blade. Doesn't matter if it's an auto blade, you're taking out the blade, you're putting in and you're shutting the little handle. Okay, that's it. Now you're gonna, now you're gonna draw instead of cut. Okay, so let's just go to, okay, we're gonna draw. So we're gonna click okay. And you're going to click okay and you're gonna say draw instead of cut, right? And look at the lines are blue because you're drawing instead of cutting. And when you're cutting, the line will be black. Okay, so it's doing it. And it doesn't take long. The reason it's not taking very long is because I'm not filling it in. Okay, I'm not filling it in. But now you might be wondering, what do you mean you're not filling it in? I'm going to, I'm going to talk about a couple more things. I'm not filling it in, meaning I'm not, let me, it's hollow. See, I can color this in later and I've done some examples of that. I can cut this out, which I've done, I've done examples of that. This is only about drawing right now, but you could then take a shape. You could take a shape, put it around the back of this and you could cut this out. Okay. But right now it is, it is hollow. It is empty. Okay, so if you want to fill this in, I just need to explain this part because this is very important because you might be confused about why is it not solid. Let's put this paper back there for a moment. If you want to take this, I'm going to go back to just going back to this editing mode. I'm in editing mode. You want to take 89 and you want to fill it in. It's fine if you're using Canvas Workspace software because I do teach you how to use the, the, the paint bucket or the actual fill and you can fill in a color and when you send it to this machine then it will it will color in solid for you but if you're on the machine and this is where you originated and this is where your your graphic originated meaning you just wrote this here if you're here and you want to make that solid okay you're going to go into your your editing mode right you're going to go into your and you're going to go into where you can resize it, right? Right where you can resize it. And there's a little button here and that's your fill. You see that little fill? It's like, it looks like a little highlighter. And now, let me zoom in. See, now it's filled. Okay, it's filled solid. And you'd have to do that to the little TH as well. Go into the, where you can resize and you can fill it. And it's also in your settings in the other models, but that's that little icon you're looking for, okay? In your editing settings. So that's how. So now if I, now when I, if I were to draw this, it would take me probably five minutes, but it, the, the pen tool would be coloring in this, this whole thing solid for you. Okay, so that is how pretty much in, that's pretty much all you need to know for the pen tool that's built in. I mean, you got your, you're gonna take the lid, you're gonna open it up, you're going to put your little lid back on, okay? And as long as you're using, for example, I'm using Whisper White cardstock, okay? So I will show you something about this, is that if, because I'm using a really good, you know, cardstock, like good ink absorption, I can then take my blends and here's, this is a Just Jade. Okay, I'm gonna use just, I'm using the thin side of the Just Jade. I'd probably put this on a solid surface before I color, but I just wanna show you that if you stay away from the lines, it won't smear. So I like whatever magical liquid they used in there. In this little pen tool, it reminds, it reminds me of using like Memento Black ink because that's what I use when I'm stamping and I'm able to color in. And I find this, really fun because I can then match the color of my markers of my blend markers to whatever project I'm doing so I can use coordinating colors with my stamp and blend so I tend to 
I tend to create things sort of hollow. I guess, you know, I, I tend to not fill in when I'm coloring a lot. And then sometimes I do, and I'm going to show you examples of both. All right, so next, I need to sort of clear the deck here and make some room. I'm going to show you how to use the universal pen holder. Now you are going to learn how to draw with the universal pen holder tool. Okay, it comes in a package like this, and I'll link to it. I kept my packaging, and I'm going to explain why for the next step. We need the packaging. All right, so, but for this part, we don't. And we're just going to take, this is, this is the actual pen holder. Okay, so you might be tempted to take a pen and just, you know, shove it in there and just stick it in and stick it in. But you need to align it. Okay, you need to use this carrier and you need to line up these arrows and you need to align it. So the concept is that you take whatever medium you're going to be drawing on. So I'm drawing on Whisper White cardstock. That's usually what I'm drawing on. Sometimes I use some thicker cardstock, but this is regular Whisper White cardstock, the kind that comes in 40 a pack. It's not thick Whisper White. So it's a, it's a little bit thinner. I use it for my card bases. I need to make sure that when I put this in there, and the pen goes down, it has to touch the paper so that when you when you take this out and put it in and replace the blade holder with the pen holder, with the universal pen holder, it knows exactly which depth to cut, I mean to draw. Now, if you don't do this, you'll end up, <laughs> trust me, even if your pen slips, you know, if it's if it's not in here good or you're, it doesn't do it right, you're gonna end up kind of smearing your paper, it'll be at the wrong depth. So here's how to do it. Well, we already talked about the first step is you're putting in, you're putting in the, the carrier. So now I want to show you the inside of the universal pen holder. There are little grasp inside there, little, little, I guess, teeth. Okay. So you're going to turn this and I'm just going to show you that. See this? When you look through it, you can see that they hold on to the pen. So there's, there's only a little bit of leeway there. So you want to use pens that fit if you can. And if not, I will show you how to adapt them. Well, it happens to be that all my Stampin' Up! markers fit perfectly. I didn't plan it. Stampin' Up! probably didn't plan it. I, d I can't imagine that the, anyone planned this. But these pens fit perfectly. This is amazing. So I usually draw with the thin side, only because in my experience, I, I've drawn with the thin side and the thick side, and this kind of smeared the thick side. When I mean thick side is all our Stampin' Up! markers come with a brush tip and a fine tip. Okay, now the fine tip is great for drawing and it doesn't smear, but the you know the problem might be however that it takes forever to fill in your your drawing if you're going to try to fill in instead of making something just an outline we'll, we'll just do an outline for this to teach you how to do it so we're going to go so i took off the lid of my pen and i can i'm opening this up so it's open it's not it's not shut yet and i could stick the i can stick the marker in there and i'm going to stick it in the holder like this like so so the arrows line up now i'm going to tap 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 right until it touches the paper but I need to put this down so you're gonna kind of miss this angle I'll pick it up after I'm done after I after I make sure that the pen is in there tight so I'm gonna tap 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 right hold this with your finger and just sort of tap and I can hear it touching the paper and it touches the paper and it should make a dot on my paper and then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna secure the pen the marker I mean the Stampin' Up marker I'm securing it by lifting up I lift it up, and there's even a little diagram. Lift up, over, and down. And now, look, my pen is secure. And see that little dot? The little dot is on the paper. That's what I want. So now my universal pen holder tool is aligned, and this is Flirty Flamingo. Only because I'm still doing the same 89th birthday. I'm still drawing the same thing as we drew before. Well, I'll draw something else in the next part to change it up. But I can never have enough of these because I'm making some, some cool things for my mom's 89th birthday when it comes up. It's not coming up for a while, but I always try to do things that are relevant in my tutorials that I actually am working on. So so we have the screen already set up, so that way we, we can save time enough to do this part again. But I do want to make it an outline again. So what I'm saying is, what I told you before is, it, if you're not using the software, if you're not using Canvas Workspace, you're and, and you're just using the machine, then you needed to fill in this if you wanted this to be solid you needed to fill in okay and we went into edit mode and we filled it in with this little highlighter highlighter down there but I'm, I don't want to do that because of time and because I really don't want it filled in 
I, I really don't need it filled in because I like using blends and I like I like coloring them in myself later and it takes too long and it uses up too much ink so I'm just gonna make them and out back to outline okay so now we're gonna go ahead and get the mat load that I'll load the mat put some paper on there I replaced the universal pen holder tool with the blade holder I mean with the I've replaced the blade holder I should say I took out the blade holder and I replaced that blade holder with the universal pen holder tool and I, you'll get a better view as I as I take it back out I say okay um, okay and draw okay we're gonna draw it's blue line because we're drawing and it doesn't distinguish it doesn't care if it has the built-in pen holder tool or the universal pen holder tool drawing is drawing to the scan and cut Okay, drawing is drawing to the scan and cut. So let's show you what, what this result is. Okay, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So let's show you this. I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take you back through that align process in just a moment, but I want to take this out for a minute because what I want to show you is another tip and trick. Because we're all about tips and tricks. I'm taking this out. I'm taking this out. Well, well I'm gonna give you a better view of the alignment in just a minute. But what I want to show you now is I'm going to replace this with the blade holder and let's set it to a blade depth of four for whisper white cardstock blade depth of four. Okay. So you have your, uh, it's my flirty flamingo. I'm going to go ahead and show you another tip and trick. So we have, it's not something that would be good to cut out in one shape because it's not connected and I'm not about to use the pencil trick and connect this but there is a way to cut this out nicely and the way to cut this out nicely is you can do two things you could you could just go ahead and add a shape right here I'm gonna I could add a shape like say right here um, put I like this little postage stamp shape one of these I did one earlier okay let's just put it there let's just see what shape it is let's just see what size it is okay I could put a, a postage stamp shape there and then I can go in, right, and I can make it, uncheck this, this is this is making it so that the height and width can be changed independently of each other instead of in proportion. So three inches high we'll try and three and a half wide. Okay, so I can kind of make, actually it doesn't need to be as high. I have like three or four styluses now and I they were all sitting right here but I do have my spatula so that's okay let's make it a little but let's make it not as high two and a half by three and a half okay so that's one way to make sure that when I cut this right that it that it goes where the 89 is okay but I'm going to show you another way so really I want to get rid of the 89 I'm going to select see how you can toggle between all the things on the screen I'm done with the 89 I don't want to cut that or draw it so I just want to delete that but there's a better way I think than trying to make this line up I think there's a better way and the better way is you could put a shape right on the screen line it up visually like that a better way is to use what's called the background scan okay so when you use the background scan it lets you scan in exactly what's on the mat and then you put the shape that you just put on the screen over the top of that and it'll cut it out you have to see it to see how it works and this maybe wasn't the best shape to do that with because a postage stamp really it really does, shouldn't be changed uh, unproportionally but I think I did a pretty good job with it but see the background scan settings let's go in here you can turn it light okay that's light you can turn it background scan these are just your settings you can turn it dark but it's still not that dark and if you don't want if the background annoys you of the mat you can turn the background off I'm gonna go ahead and turn the background back on kind of dark let's see just so you can see all, it, all it's doing is taking the 89 on the mat that I colored in flirty flamingo and it's putting it there as a reference point for me to put my shape on top of and cut in the right spot okay so that's pretty nice and I can also do this one down here I have to cut that one out as well so now we're gonna say cut and we've already set the blade depth of four. If you're using, 
If you're using auto blade, the STX should be using auto blade. And of course, then you would not need to set the blade depth. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that because, you know, it's not just about drawing with the scan and cut. You want to be able to cut it out as well. Okay, so that shape came out pretty good and I have a card element. I can make outlines for it, other layers, offsets, and the whole nine yards. Okay, so I'll show you that. And then I'm going to get back to, I, I need to really finish the universal pen holder tool with pens that fit before I teach you about pens that don't fit so that you really get the concept down. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's an example. And then this was another example and we could have done the same thing and I might, I might do this later. I might cut that one out or I have punches. I have dies. I might cut this out with something else. I'll be doing a lot of different crafts in celebration. So we, we'll figure out all these things, but now I can. Now, now that I have a nice pink color, I can color it in with, with blends and with different things. All right, so let's talk about the universal pen holder a little bit more before we, so let's show you about how to remove this. And then I'm gonna load something else and align something else. I'm gonna remove it by, and it's pretty tight because these fit perfectly, again, Stampin' Up markers. And I'll have a link to some Stampin' Up markers. You can't really buy them one at a time unless we have a special, like in a catalog. Did you notice how I just did that, by the way? I went up and over and down. You can't really buy these single, and you can buy them in packs of like say five. We just had some on clearance recently with our retired colors. We can buy them in packs of 10, maybe maybe 10, they're $3 each when you get them in a pack of 10 for like 30. Or you can get the whole giant collection, the whole giant collection of all of our color collections. All right, so let's do something else. First, let me just do this one again. This is a different color, just for review, and then I wanna show you another thing that fits in here. I like to I like to do things at different angles because of you know the different camera angles so here we have and this isn't really the best flat surface but pretend that's the flat table just so you get a better angle I'm putting it farther away because I want you to be able to see this so we have our so we have our little carrier you know that we're gonna align this up with and just to make sure I'm using the right vocabulary because I'm not a spokesperson for brother I just sometimes I make up my own voca vocabulary so it's called a support, or it's called a stand. It's called a, a stand, a support stand. That's what it's called, a support stand. So you put your little, you put your universal pen holder into the support stand, and you put that onto a flat surface, and you're gonna take your medium, whatever you're gonna be drawing onto, and you put that into the support stand, and then you're gonna take your marker, whatever side, and you're gonna make sure that it's open, set to open, you put that in there, Okay, you touch it, tap, 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 but not too hard. You just touch it to the medium. So you get a little dot of ink, and then I'm gonna push up, over, and down. Still, still good, it's still secure. Take it out, right? Shake, shake, shake. Shake your booty, shake your booty. Sorry, I break out into song sometimes. All right, that's it. That's how you get your, that's how you get your pen into the universal pen holder. Now, so you might be wondering, Paper Chef, what about, I don't have Stampin' Up! markers, I have all kinds of stuff, I'm a craft hoarder like the rest of us, right? What if I have these, okay? I know you have these, who doesn't have Sharpie markers? Well, good news for Sharpie markers, and I'm missing one there, I think, I forget what color I'm missing. Sharpie markers, not every Sharpie marker, okay? The fine tip, permanent Sharpie marker, and I've used these in my scan and cut, I know they work. Take your lid off, okay? Right, same process, it works, okay? So we're gonna put it in the support stand, right? Support stand. Don't cheat the step, believe me. I thought I could cheat the step. Don't ever cheat the step. You need to align it every time with whatever medium. So I'm putting my paper there, right? I'm putting my Sharpie marker in there, touching it down, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna grasp it in. And it was a lot looser it's a lot looser, so you have to be careful with it, but it still fits in there, and it's just a, a little bit looser. So that is how to use the universal pen holder with pens that fit. Okay, so when we're good, we got that down. So now, we're done, we take out, whoops, see how quick it flew out? See how, definitely it's, it's, it's a looser size, but it still fits because there's a range, because of those little teeth I showed you, there's a range that fit. I'm going to put my marker back in its case because I really need a better case for these. 
I have, I have like little M&M containers, some little tins I have that I usually put my markers into so they don't dry out. All right, so now let's talk about when you have, we're going to talk about the universal pen holder now, again, and I'm getting back to Lydia's question. Lydia is my student from Udemy, and you can be my students too if you want to take my very in-depth classes, and I'll have links to that in the description. I do get into this, I, if you think I get into detail here, I get into more, even more detail in my courses, and they're, they're just different, different kind of platform, so it's a different kind of, different kind of learning. Okay, so... We have this universal pen holder tool and now you're now you have pens that don't fit so let's take about let's talk about some pens that don't fit okay actually we're going to use these ones we're going to use maybe my memory these are some creative memories pens i can't remember if these fit or don't fit because i've it's been a while let's see if these i think these don't fit either yeah these don't fit okay so i've done it but i've already done a tutorial on these and this was in my course i actually have a section in my course my sdx scan and cut course using these pens pretty sure it was in my SDX course for the Brother Scan and Cut. So this is a Creative Memories pen, a metallic pen. These don't fit, but I wanted to show you this one because this one is really doesn't fit. This is really tiny. These are metallic pens. These are, these are by Pentel metallic pens. And when I say they really don't fit, I mean, these are super thin, but you're like, wow, aren't these cool pens? I know you probably have pens in your craft stash. So these really don't fit. Look at that. Flies right through. Okay. Flies right through. Doesn't fit. Even if I, even if I, even when I shut my little, you know, the little teeth there, it still doesn't fit. Okay. So what do we do? What do we do? We adapt. We adapt our pens. We make them fit. But you're like saying, well, where and how far? So I have a tip and trick for that. I do. So we have, you're going to go to your scan and cut. And first of all, we're going to look at our, that's why I said to save your handy instructions, because this is, this is a tip that's one of those, um, paper chef tips that I came up with and I, I hope you like this tip because you're going to make something that's going to help you with every kind of pen in your universal pen holder tool. So here's our instructions. Here's the instructions. It says universal pen holder. Okay. It's in different languages. It says, look, it says it handles a diameter of 9.6 millimeters to 11.4 millimeters. Oh, okay. We can, okay. It handles a diameter of nine points. This is its range of diameter range. All right, so I look at my scan and cut and I say, I, by the way, I'm back here at this beginning screen. I said, oh, pattern and scan, I'm back to the beginning. And I go, well, let's go to settings. Okay, go to settings. I'm not gonna try to convert, I, I know I'm not gonna try to convert imperial to metric. Instead, I'm gonna change it to metric. Go ahead and change your units to metric. Change them to millimeters. Okay, change it to millimeters. And I hope you know where I'm going with this. I'm gonna make myself a template that looks like this. I'm not even doing the small one. I just I just went right for the bigger circle. I went, I went for a 11 millimeter circle. So I figured if I go for a circle in the in here, if I go for BA dash A045, if I go for a circle and I make it 11 millimeters because it's already right it's it, the range is 9.6 to 11.4. If I'm very safe if my circle, my template is 11 millimeters, if I make something really padded up and I pad up my pens to be 11 millimeters, then I know I'm good. So there I go. I set that on the mat. Let's go ahead and turn off the background so you can see that. See, there's my little circle. That is my template. I want to put it over here though, because I don't like to cut so close to the edge. So I'm going to put a little, I'm going to cut a template. It is by the way, 11 millimeters in case you missed that. So you get your little, get a piece of whisper weight cardstock, or it doesn't matter what cardstock, just stick some cardstock in your machine and sit, hit cut. I'm cutting out a little circle for myself. Okay, so there's your tip. This is your tip. This is how your markers are allowed to be this wide and still be good. Now you could have done two circles. You could have done one that's like nine millimeters to 11 and had your range, but here's the concept. Now I can pad up the pens that don't fit and watch this. Pretty cool, right? They're, if I make them any bigger than this, they're not gonna fit, but I make them exactly 11, they're gonna fit in my pen holder. Now where do I do the padding and what do I pad it with? Okay, so use, this is your instructions. So I just came up with, you need to pad it in at least those two areas. So let's do one. I'm not gonna do the whole one because of you know time and I respect my viewers time and it is YouTube where I can't go, go onto this forever, but I'm gonna take off the lid of my pen and I'm gonna just show you this. So 
you take your pen off lid off and you get your you can either get painters tape painters tape to pad it with you need something that's going to come off your pen later and something that's not going to leave a residue hey yay in the midst of chaos i found my my stylus all right but you can use washi tape as well okay washi tape and you're just going to see those are your areas you have to cover right in that section so there's the tip of your pen and since that's the tip of your pen you need to make sure the padding is on that area okay so the best thing is to do is take a giant piece this is going to take more than this much washi tape but i'm just trying to give you an idea i don't want to you know do the whole thing but you're going to take it and leave it straight and you're going to you know take a straight piece and you're just going to do this so you're going to pad you're you're make you're buffing up your pen to make it to make it fit in the universal pen holder and of course, do all your projects at once after you do that. You know, once you get it to fit in your pen holder, do all your projects and then put your pen back. But remember, when you're when you're doing a lot of drawing at once, give your time, give your ink time to kind of go back down. Like if you're making a lot of Christmas cards, or in this case, we'll we'll draw something. Make sure you let the ink run down. Don't just keep drawing, drawing, drawing. The ink, the ink does take get down there slowly. Okay, so let's check it. So you keep checking. You're like, oh, I didn't pat it enough, right? It's not, it's not in, it's not in there enough. But when you get all done, there you're, you're all done. You're like, I padded it enough. Okay, there's my pen's gonna fit in there. So that's your answer, Lydia. What, what happens when you have pens that don't fit in there? And this one's gonna be in there pretty tight because look. Oh, but I did make this a little small. Remember I have, I was allowed to go up to 11.4 millimeters. So this one's 11 millimeter hole. So this will fit in the pen holder because I did draw with this before. We're gonna draw with this one. This is silver, I have silver gold. Silver and gold. And then of course my lid doesn't fit back on. So if you're not gonna draw with it all right away, then you want, then you want to keep your pen from drying out. Then you can kind of cover your pen, you know, like this, if you don't have time to put your cap on because maybe you're like, oh, I just got done doing this whole padding on my pen. I don't feel like, you know, I gotta go to work and I'm not done drawing. So you might, you know, just make sure it doesn't dry up. So we have it. Now we're gonna just do the same thing we did earlier, right? We're going to take our carrier, we're going to take our, right, our unit, we're going to make sure it's open, set to open. See, there's nothing, it's hollow, it's set to open. Put that in there, like that. Put the little piece of paper, just keep using the same one because it has dots on it already, keep using the same paper. Okay, and we're going to put this adapted, modified pen into the universal pen holder, okay? with whatever you adapted it with. Washi tape, painter's tape. And let's see, did it make a line? Oop, a little bit more, it needs to go down a little more. See how loose that was? It's not, oh, it's it's doing it, it's doing it. I think it wasn't loose because it's as long as it's drawing, see how it's drawing the silver? It's okay. I thought it was too loose, but it's not. It's good. I think because my pen was stored sideways. So I'm gonna take out, I hope you saw me do that. Took out, took out the, inner, took out the blade. Same in any model, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you have an SDX model, okay? You're still doing the same thing I just did. You're taking out the blade holder and you're replacing it with the universal pen holder. And if you don't, the scan and cut will tell you. It'll say, hey, you need to put in the universal pen holder tool. I mean, it, if you try to draw and you don't have a drawing tool in there, it'll tell you. All right, so let's draw something. And I'm gonna, now just to change things up. Oh, by the way, go back to inches after that. That's the, that's the most you'll see me use metric on my channel. Okay, that's it guys. We, we did a metric, that was it. We did an 11 millimeter circle. You probably won't see me use metric again, but we're gonna use it for that. So now we're gonna go back to the, we're gonna go home, pattern, and I went into here and I did, I went into the winter. Okay, I went to the little drawings. I went to winter and I'm gonna, I did the snowflake. I'm gonna show you the snowflake later. So at the end of the video, but I'll do the snowflake instead. And we'll go ahead and sit it on the mat to get a relative size of it. And go ahead and make a big snowflake, but I don't like to put it too close to the edge. Now, if you're gonna try to cut, I'm gonna put this on dark paper because it's silver. If you're gonna try to cut it though, it's very hard to scan this in and cut it. But, and, but there are other ways to cut it. And I probably have done this with the canvas workspace if I was gonna be doing drawing and cutting lines. But for now, we're just gonna, for the intensive purposes of this lesson, we're gonna say draw, because I want you to be able to see this silver marker. Now, I like to put a little painter's tape 
down on my mat to make sure that my and that was by the way Knight of Navy cardstock and you're gonna say well why didn't you align it with Knight of Navy cardstock I really probably should have so actually I should have I should have used this piece which is what it's here for totally what it's here for but you know what I keep on rolling I can't stop my tutorial now because I'm too far invested into it so uh, you would have used this piece of Knight of Navy as your medium for the depth but it'll work because it'll still work okay so anyway remember because that you were aligning it right so we were aligning it See? so there's the snowflake And I did do it twice, but I'm just doing it once now. Okay, in the example I'm gonna show you, I did I did have to draw it twice because the ink is taking, it's taking a long time to come out of the pen. And it is down far enough because if, if anything, this paper was thicker. So I know my pen is down far enough. It's just that the ink, when you go this fast, it has a hard time getting, you know, getting your drawing done. So you could do a couple things. I mean, you could, you could slow it down in your settings, right? Or I could just draw it twice, right? You can, here's your draw speed. This is your default is three. So you could draw as slow as you want. It'll help your pen keep the ink flowing, but you don't have to go that far. You could just draw, I'm gonna draw that same snowflake again while it's on the mat. And then I'll be back to show you my projects. And you already got to see, just, I'm not gonna show you this project again but I'm, you've already got to see that project, but that's that's what that looks like. And then of course, if you're gonna cut it out, you could try to scan it in and cut it out, but I would rather you have used Canvas Workspace if you're gonna be doing drawing and cutting. This is better for just drawing and cutting shapes around what you're drawing. All right, see you in the next section of the video, thanks. And now I would like to share examples with you of items I used the pen tool for, okay, the, the built-in pen tool the universal pen holder tool with my stampin stampin up markers and then the universal pen holder tool with something that i adapted okay so i will explain that now so let's start with my examples of and let me let me just get out the pen i used for that one here we go here's is the pen i adapted so now i want to show you this this is i use the black i use this is the pen holder tool and I used the canvas workspace and I did I did what's called uh, fit to path this is something I've done tutorials on YouTube about and it's it's uh, when you can use a feature called fit to path you draw a path and I was drunk I was going for like a snow covered hill and I did let it snow and I I used the pen tool I cut these out in black and then I colored them in with Stampin blends the pool party dark pool party light pool party and then I used the Wink of Stella. I don't know if you could see that. Wink of Stella glitter pen. Yeah, I think you can see it with the light. So this has glitter in the bottom one. I might even put glitter on the other ones as well. And this is gonna become a card, maybe some snowflakes on it, the front of a card. Okay, so let it snow that. That is the pen tool. Another example of the pen tool is my friend, <coughs> sorry, don't wanna cough. My friend Rita's birthday. It's her 40th birthday, so I made her a coordinating card and a tag for her care package, for her birthday care package. This is using Birthday Bonanza by Stampin' Up. It's a retired suite of products. I use it all the time for birthday cards. I was able to use the pen tool, again, the pen tool built in to write Rita on a card. I've shown you how to make these shaker cards on my channel. I cut the oval, I cut the outline, I cut this entire piece using the scan and cut. I even cut, that's one, that was a different tutorial about how to cut this oval here. And you can see there's a little acetate window. Another tutorial I've shown how to cut pattern paper many times. This pattern paper is from the Birthday Bonanza designer series paper, those little ice cream cones. But that Rita, it, oh, by the way, it does work better when you color on Whisper White cardstock because this is Whisper White. And look, I was able to do gradations. This is Daffodil Delight, uh, dark and light. I was able to do gradations and everything and the ink absorbed, but then the ink smeared a little when I tried to color with the blends on regular Stampin' Up! cardstock called Daffodil Delight. So be sure if you're coloring, use use the Whisper White cardstock. It's just better ink absorption. Anyway, so this is all done with the scan and cut, but the point I'm showing you was this. This was uh, Bermuda Bay Blends. I was showing you that 
you can draw and you can personalize. That's really the benefit of being able to draw. I think one of the benefits is just being able to personalize things. So that's for a birthday care package. And then that's the inside has, you know, I'm glad it's your birthday so I can tell you how wonderful you are. Okay, so this goes with the theme I'm going for. Okay, then, so that was that was the building pen tool. I know I repeat myself a lot, but this is important. I'm gonna just take these away for a second so I can still talk about the built-in pen tool. During my Canvas Workspace A to Z course, I taught you how to make stitching. So you can use, instead of a solid line, you can use dashed lines, and I used the pen tool to create these tags. Okay, these little tags. And, and not to digress, but you can also create stitching effects using the blade, which makes a stitching, this is a cut stitching. That's a cut stitching effect, but this one is the, the, the pen tool. Okay, so that's what we're talking about right now is the drawing, so that's the pen tool. And I did that in a lesson called Layers and Offset Lines. Okay, so let me put that back down. Now, today we talked about in this tutorial using the universal pen holder, okay? The universal pen holder with our own markers, with, with markers, stamping up markers, okay? So we talked about that, so I'll show you examples of that. This is an example of that. This is an example of using, this is shaded spruce. I, I cut this out hollow without a fill. I sent it from my machine to the scan and cut without a fill. I used a shaded spruce marker and then I colored it in with the Stampin' Blends, the Pool Party Stampin' Blends and it's gonna become a Christmas card. So this is the universal pen holder tool and you can only come up with, I mean, what's great about that is you get your own colors, you can do your own projects with your own coordinated colors when you use the universal pen holder tool. Okay, these are the universal pen holder tool as well. Both of these, this is that same, this is shaded spruce, these two, I'm gonna compare these two. This is shaded spruce with just an outline and then I colored it in by hand. This is shaded spruce using the, the marker where I colored it in and it took probably a good 10, I mean, it took a long time, I can't remember, probably 10 minutes because it has to fill all this in, line by line by line. And your machine has to be really aligned well for this to work well. Then afterwards, I um, use this Tis the Season designer series paper and some classic Christmas designer series paper. And I don't put on a, nothing on the inside of the card. This is shaded spruce card. And I did some little embellishments and there's some Winkastella on my little trees, on my Tis the Season trees. And I just um, just cut all this out. These I cut out with the scan and cut. Basically, I mean, I mean, you can see how I'm using the scan and cut for so many of these projects. These embellishments are made with the scan and cut, but you have the Merry Christmas. Now then here, I taught in the course, this is my Canvas Workspace A to Z course, how to use your universal, I mean, not how to, I'm sorry, how to, I actually didn't teach about the mechanics of the machine. I'm doing that on YouTube right now. But what I'm saying is in the, sh in the course, it's all software-based. Most, most of the course is software-based. I teach you how to use your font to create a shape. In this, this case, it's like a half circle, you know, like an, or like an oval shape. And this is a fit to path. So this is writing happy holidays along a path. Okay, so that's what that is. And what else? And I cut these out with the scan and cut, some Winkastella, again, blank inside, shaded spruce, a little bit of Tista Season designer series paper behind it with some Tista Season embellishments. All right, so now this is all universal pen holder tool. And let's say I have examples here. This one, these are these are SVGs. You can get SVG files, and instead of instead of cutting the SVG files, or instead of making T-shirts out of them, you can use your universal pen holder tool, and you can you can draw the SVG files. And in this case, I cut the outline using the scan and cut. But this one here took about 21 minutes. I think it took me to. I used Early Espresso and Old Olive and Pumpkin Pie and Crush Curry. Okay, so I just I just used. I create I created an, I took an SVG file and I you know colored it all in and same with this one okay so you could you could color or you can cut or you can draw I'm sorry I'm sorry you could draw I shouldn't say color you can draw or you can cut when you have files okay and then this is that was the universal pen holder tool and then lastly then I adapted this is my last example my last example is I adapted the universal pen holder tool this one to hold this kind of, this marker, this is a silver marker. I have to try to get the lid, can't get my lid back on until I take my tape off. But this, this marker, it's a Pentel. 
I showed you in this tutorial how to use this, but this one I had already previously drawn at the Snowflake. So this is using silver to draw with. And I think I drew twice because when you have a fine tip marker, let me put some color in here so I don't get so washed out. Let me just, let me turn off this light. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so you can see the silver. When you have a fine tip marker like this, and you've adapted it for the universal pen holder tool, and it's it's really fine tip. You might have to you might have to draw twice, so make sure that your card stack is taped down so that it doesn't move your snowflake, and then you could draw over it twice. Now I'm not going to color that in. I like the way I like we have silver on Knight of Navy. So this is a tag created with some mesh mesh ribbon, um, Knight of Navy card stock, and some silver silver pen. Okay. So that is using, now that's still using the universal pen holder, but this is using an example of adapting your own pen, your own pen to create this effect. This is a silver. And so of course, if you're gonna use metallic pens, you wanna use them on dark colors so that they stand up. And I could have probably scanned this in and cut it out as well, but it's kind of hard to scan in dark colors. So I'd have been better off, like if I wanted to cut this out, I'd, better, I'd be better off sending this from Canvas Workspace, actually over to the machine and drawing the drawing and cutting that way because then you don't have to worry about scanning something in because you it doesn't have to worry about being recognized. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on drawing with your scan and cut. I hope you have many ideas on how you can use these different tools for your own projects and to customize the colors and the, and the projects that you're working on. That's all for now. This is The Paper Chef.